In this session, we recap everything you need to know about matrix algebra. We'll look at matrix multiplication, calculating a determinant, and finding the inverse of a matrix. For each topic, we'll be doing one or two examples, just to refresh your memory. For more practice, you can find dedicated videos on my channel for each type of exercise. We start with the basics, multiplying two by two matrices, here A and B. Step one is to determine the dimensions of the resulting matrix. Simply take the row dimension of A and the column dimension of B. Because in this case, that results in a two by two matrix, we need to determine four elements. And the procedure goes as follows. For the upper left element, which sits on the first row and the first column, we isolate the first row of A and the first column of B. Then we multiply the corresponding elements and add them together. In this case, we get 1 times 2 plus 3 times 1. Next, we move to the upper right element, still on the first row, but now on the second column. Therefore, again, we single out the first row of A and the second column of B. And for this combination, again, we multiply and add the corresponding elements. For the lower left element, now on the second row and the first column, we can perform the same procedure. And likewise for the element on the second row and second column. Isolating the corresponding row and column of A and B, we multiply and add the elements to get the final element. Then we compute all of the elements and get our final result. This is straightforward, and the exact same can be done for 3x3 three three matrices. Granted, this is a bit more work and thus more prone to errors, but the procedure remains exactly the same. The upper left element sits on the first row and the first column. Therefore, we isolate the first row of A and the first column of B. Then we multiply the first two elements, add them to the product of the second pair of elements, and add the product of the final pair of elements. In this case, this gives us the number 7 for our first element. Now going through all the rows and columns, we see our method work out in practice. Again, the hardest part is keeping your focus. The second important object when it comes to matrix algebra is the determinant of a matrix and how to calculate it. Note that only square matrices have determinants. Let's again start with a 2x2 two two matrix called A. To calculate the determinant, we start by copying the matrix elements and put them between straight lines. Now, this is just an alternative notation for the determinant. To actually calculate it, we run down a row or column and perform an operation for each element in it. You can pick any row or column, but a time-saving choice is to pick the one with the most zeros, if there is such a column or row. Here, we will take the first row. Then we isolate the first element, scrap the entire row and column on which it sits, and multiply this element with the determinant of the remaining matrix. Because for a 2x2 two two matrix, we are just left with a determinant of a number, we just multiply by this number, in this case 1. Then we shift to the next element and do exactly the same. Isolate it, scrap its row and column, and multiply by the remaining number. However, the thing to remember here is to include a minus sign. Then the resulting determinant is simply 4. A shortcut that is only applicable to 2x2 two two matrices is to simply multiply the diagonal elements and subtract from that the product of the off-diagonal elements. And this shortcut will save you a lot of time later on. For a 3x3 three three determinant, again the same procedure applies, but you need to keep up your focus. We start by picking a row, and let's take the first one because it has a zero. Now we can start. Isolate the first element, scrap its row and column, and multiply it with the remaining determinant. In this case, it's the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix, which we now know can be easily calculated with the product of the diagonal minus the product of the off-diagonal. Thus, we get 1 times minus 8. Then, we move to the second element, for which we already put a minus sign in front, so we don't forget to put it there later on. Isolate the element, scrap the row and column, and compute the determinant of the remaining matrix. For the last element, we see that it is a zero, and thus we multiply the remaining determinant with zero. And therefore, let's not bother calculating that two by two determinant, saving some time. Taking these terms together, we get a determinant of minus 47. The last topic 
is to calculate the inverse of a matrix. And this can be done in just five simple steps. Let's go through them for the same 3x3 three three matrix as before to save us some time. Step one is to calculate the determinant. Now we've already done so in the previous part. It's minus 47. Step two is to calculate the minors of the matrix and then compose them into a new matrix. Now the minor for each element is the determinant of the remaining matrix once we've scrapped the row and column of our specific element. As an example, for the first element, that would be the determinant of minus two, one, four, two, which is minus eight. And now you see why being able to calculate two by two determinants is so valuable, since the same procedure needs to be done for all nine elements, each time calculating a two by two determinant. Step three is taking care of the signs by mapping a checker pattern of plus and minus signs over the matrix and adjusting where necessary. When an element overlaps with a minus sign, we need to flip the sign around. And now the hardest part is done. Step four is transposing our matrix, swapping rows and columns. And in step five, we divide the result by the determinant we calculated in step one. And the result is the inverse matrix of our original matrix. You can check the result by multiplying these two together and you should get the identity matrix. As before, the procedure itself is quite straightforward, these five steps, but it is the execution of the calculations that most often results in errors. Luckily, the more you practice, the more familiar you become with the procedure and the more focus you can put into the calculations themselves. If you want more practice, I have videos on each of these topics. And as always, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.